All right, so now we're all on the same page. That's the visual we have. A parent taking their young child to the doctor, right? The child usually gets this fear of going to the doctor's office, correct? So let's say it's time for an appointment and the child has to get a shot. And the child, let's say he's three years old, right? And they're about to go in and they've, they've, they're they've smart enough now. They've clocked. They've understood that I'm going to take a shot, right? What are they doing? Are they smiling or are they crying? What do you think? They're crying, right? They're sad. They're anticipating. They're scared. They're, you know, they're pulling at you. You know, you're trying to drag them to the, no, no, we have to do this. No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And they're crying and they can't understand. They cannot understand why they have to feel this pain. They can't understand why they have to go through this experience. But you understand as the parent, right? No parent likes to see their child cry. No parent likes to see their child in pain or in fear. But yet you still take them and you force them to do it against their wishes, right? And the way that you console them is the, the way that you justify this experience that they had to go through is you tell them it's for your own good. You tell them the alternative is worse. If you're sick and you don't get your medicine or you don't get your shot and, and you don't get your, God forbid, you know, may Allah protect us and our children. If they need surgery, if you don't get the surgery, it's worse. The alternative is worse. So this is how you are justifying it. And it's correct. It's a correct justification. You tell them, look, this is better for you if you only knew. And finally, you tell them one day you'll understand inshallah. Correct? So far, so good. We're all on the same page. So all these justifications are perfectly true. And the kid, inshallah, when they grow a bit older, they will understand and they will be grateful. And this is one experience out of the hundreds that we as parents do with our children is that so many things, you have a higher vantage point. Your expertise, your knowledge, your experience tells you why they have to go through this experience that they don't want to go through. And this experience that may cause them some suffering, some pain in exchange for avoiding a greater suffering and a greater pain. This is the analogy, the parent and the child here. This is the analogy of a person who is tapped in, tuned in to the patterns and the signs of Allah and the one who is not. Now, putting aside children, adults, we're all adults, two adults. One of them is tuned in to the patterns of Allah. They have a better understanding of why difficulty has to happen. They have a better understanding of when it happens, how to process it, as we discussed in the khutbah. They have a better understanding of when it's happening, of what they can expect next, because we talked about it's a cycle. Everything Allah puts in this world is cyclical. I mean, it happens in stages. So if you're very in tune with the stage that we're in now as an ummah, as an individual, as a nation, as a world, you get a lot more calm about what stage comes next. And I'll give you an example. This is mentioned by scholars throughout uh, history where they said when, when the enemy of Allah would get extremely transgressive, when they would get extremely arrogant, when Fir'aun said, Ana rabbukum ala, ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. When uh, Fir'aun, he was a tyrant for many, many years. But when he reached a point where he said, you know what? I'm your Lord most high. I don't know of any Lord for you besides myself. When he reached that peak arrogance, this, the people who have knowledge of the signs of Allah, they would get reassured as nasty as it is, as horrible as it is to see a tyrant reach peak arrogance, a part of them would say, you know what, Alhamdulillah, because Allah never allows a tyrant to remain in peak arrogance for long. So the scholars would say when the, when the Tughyan reached its limits and passed its limits, when the transgression reached past its limits, there would be a consolation there. As much as it hurts, doesn't mean you'd be happy, but there's a consolation that Alhamdulillah, we're in the last stage of the oppression. And what comes after is exactly what came to Fir'aun and to every tyrant in history. No tyrant has ever lived forever. No tyrant has ever kept their oppression going forever. And no tyrant ever will. Alhamdulillah. So when you're tuned in to the patterns of Allah, you are like the parent who can see a bit further, who can understand and say, just bear it with patience and say, this is for the greater good. And say, you know what? I see, I, I know where this lands. I know where this story ends. Alhamdulillah. And I'll give you a few examples uh, today, inshallah. And of course, first off, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa taught us, عَدَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَبَتْهُ صَرَّاءٍ شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَبَتْهُ ضَرَّاءٍ صَبَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ How wonderful is the case of a believer. Everything, there is good for him in everything, and this can only apply to a believer. If he finds prosperity or ease in this life, he expresses gratitude to Allah, and that's good for him. And if adversity befalls him, if difficulty befalls, he endures it patiently, and that is also good for him. Everything is part of God's plan. There's a reason for everything that happens, even if you don't fully grasp it at the moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reassuring you. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Allah knows and you know not. And Allah will reassure the hearts of the believers in the next life. If he doesn't do so in this life, he will reassure you and you will get to see the bigger picture and you will know why it had to happen. And you will know what value it brought to you. You know the famous hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ says, when the believers who lived a comfortable life, when they come to the day of judgment, and they see the believers who lived a difficult life, and the magnificent reward that they receive 
the enormous reward that they receive. The believers who live comfortably their entire life will be jealous. You know this hadith? You've come across it before? They'll be so jealous that the hadith continues. Prophet ﷺ says, they will wish that they could go back to this dunya and have their skin cut up with scissors just to be able to match that kind of reward. SubhanAllah. Meanwhile, those who suffered, those who lost everything. Another hadith, though the poorest of the believers will enter paradise so much earlier than the rich because there's less to account for on the Day of Judgment. One hadith mentions even 500 years before the rich. So subhanAllah, there's so many things that again, when you tap into these things, you start to piece the puzzle and you say, you know what? I find reassurance in everything that happens. I find it easy to have tawakkul, to trust in Allah no matter what happens. I lose my job, I say, alhamdulillah, this was written from Allah. Yeah, of course, be careful. Iqilha wa tawakkal, the Prophet ﷺ said, tie your camel and have tawakkul. You can't do either or. Tie your camel meaning, you know the famous story, the Sahabi asked him when he came to the masjid, he put, he was going to leave his camel out. And you know, back then, that's how they park, right? They, they tie the camel to the post. So the Sahabi, he was a new Muslim and he said, well, You've taught us about this concept called tawakkul, trusting in Allah. So does that mean I stop tying my camel because, you know, it's God's plan. If he wants my camel to go, he'll go. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, no, aqilha wa tawakkal. Tie it and trust. Because if you don't tie it, you haven't done your part. And you say, well, I trust Allah. Well, no, of course it's going to wander off. If you leave your house unlocked and you go for a vacation for six months, you haven't done your part at all. But guess what? When you do your part, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed success, right? That's where you have your tawakkul. Oh Allah, whatever you decree, my camel may die of, of illness. If Allah decreed it, that was completely out of my hand. It wasn't negligence on my part. I did what I could. In which case you say, I fully trust in Allah's plan. Allah had planned this. Allah had willed it. And that's, that's where tawakkul plays its role.